G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy for yet another daily trade update. This will probably be the last or second last that I do on the channel. Uh, obviously, we've still got a day to go in the trade period. It is the penultimate day today and we have, uh, we've got a few stories to cover. Uh, one probably won't be a hugely long video, but um, you know, a shock trade request from Jack Ginevan uh, and then a, a four-way deal that went down and a couple of other updates for you as well. Before we crack in, I just want to thank everyone for helping me get to 23 subscribers uh, in the last night or so. A couple of days ago, I set the audacious goal of trying to get to 23k by the end of the trade period and at the time I honestly thought that was ridiculous but now I think about it every time I've asked you guys for help on getting to a certain milestone by a certain time I think you've delivered absolutely every time so I just want to say thank you I don't really care so much about the, the number itself. Um, obviously, more subscribers does help in the algorithm, um, but I also just really thank you guys for um, helping me achieve a goal. You guys have been consistent, so thanks very much. Okay, let's crack into it. Uh, first of all, probably probably the biggest story out of today is that Jack Gittivan has, uh, after all the conjecture and speculation and um, you know, after pretty much every source on the topic suggesting that it's not going to happen, Jack Ginevan is set to request a trade. So I don't think he's formally requested a trade yet, but it is suggested that uh, he and his management have told Collingwood they're exploring options. And the uh, the biggest contender to secure him for next season is actually the Hawthorne Football Club. Hawthorne comes to mind uh, as a team that uh, I think we're in the mix for Kyle Lohman as well. So a little bit of a um, need for a small forward, I guess. There's certainly interest, and uh, apparently they've been interested throughout the year and now that uh, he's set to potentially request a trade they, they might swoop on him which is an interesting one be for Hawthorne because now I think about it I think they re they've got they're linked to about four players they're linked to four players this offseason and have not got a single one done yet and not to mention in addition to that they've got Kaczynski who's requested a trade to Richmond ages ago this is all going to deadline day. This is uh, this is strange from Hawthorne. We'll put a pin in that and talk about the Hawks in a minute. But um, yeah, Ginevan is set to request a trade. So the timeline on this is, um, okay, if you want to go back far enough, great second year at AFL level, kicks 40 goals. That's really good numbers for a small forward, let alone a rookie in his second year. Um, really makes a name for himself. Super annoying. Everyone remembers who he is. And then uh, this year, by comparison, he was a lot quieter. So what do you have? He had 14 appearances this year, kicked 12 goals, was selected on the field on grand final day, and obviously a premiership player too. So that will be a factor in um, exactly what his value is. But this is presumably related to uh, a bit of a selection squeeze. So obviously, yeah, obviously this only played the 14 games this year. Bobby Hill was recruited 12 months ago and obviously overtook Jack Ginevan, it's fair to say, and uh, Norm Smith medal speaks for itself. And then uh, I suppose the, the request from Lockie Shaw's is a factor in this. Now, there is a spot in the 22 opened up in theory with Taylor Adams, who played a little bit of forward, um, you know, last year. It, it, there's already kind of a suggestion that Shaw's will come in and play obviously more of a forward role and sort of fill that Adams role, at least from an outsider looking in. Collingwood fans will have a better perspective on that than me. Um, and so there was a belief that, you know, Collingwood could keep Ginevan and give him opportunity. And uh, I was just watching Swoop Luke, actually, a good Collingwood YouTuber, and he was talking about how Ginevan had a um, you know a pretty positive uh, exit uh, meeting, exit interview. Exit interview is essentially, if you don't know, um, the interview that every player does at the end of the season, end of season interview, whatever it's called. And apparently that was a positive chat, and then there was a suggestion that Ginevan was going to stay. Uh, interestingly as well, Ginevan put up an Instagram story of him at the gym um, with the caption locked in. Uh, I'll put it up on the screen there. Apparently, he deleted that two minutes after. Maybe maybe he meant locked in and as in, you know, he's training hard and then people misinterpreted it as though he was staying and he deleted it or he just changed his mind. I'm not too sure exactly what happened there. But the suggestion is that he went away to Bali. Lockie Shaw's requests the trade and now Ginevan's looking to explore his options. Presumably, his main concern is game time. So it's an interesting, somewhat interesting story to, to shake up right before deadline day. Um, what gets it done? Hawks hold 33 this year. Colin will probably find that a little bit light. And also there's the fact that Hawthorne, well, they, they've still got a, a number of academy slash father-son players in this year's draft. If they're interested in 2 Giath, he is an academy player. If a bid comes after 40, they'll need some points later in the draft. But probably more importantly, they've got Will McCabe, a father-son, who's likely to go top 20. So giving up pick 33 would actually hurt. So I'm thinking if a deal did happen hypothetically, a future second might be more on the cards. Now, a future second, if Hawthorne finished third last again, is nominally pick 21 or 23 actually, because of the priority picks that were uh, awarded to North Melbourne. So that's 23. Hawthorne's probably going to improve. I don't know what your thoughts are. I, I really don't see them finishing third last again. So we're looking at a pick in the mid to late 20s. 
which for a player that just played in a grand final, obviously not a huge contributor in that game, or this season for that matter, but does have a demonstrated history of, of kicking goals for a start. Picking the late 20s is probably worth it from a Hawthorne perspective. Uh, you roll the dice on a player who, who you presume would be in their best 22. Maybe a future second gets this done. I'm not sure if Hawthorne have any more father-sons or anything next year to consider, but um, that's probably one way I see it getting done. 33 on its own. Uh, it could be enough to get the deal done on deadline day, but at the same time, I don't see why Hawthorne would want to get rid of it. But yeah, to, to touch on Hawthorne's dealings at the moment, Marby or Chol requested a trade ages ago. Massimo D'Ambrosio equally tra- uh, requested a trade to Hawthorne a long time ago, and then more recently, Jack Gunston. Kaczynski is also a deal there. So we're looking at four or five potential deals here that, uh, that Hawthorne need to get done tomorrow and then they can I'm just kind of curious as to why it's taken so long just on D'Ambrosio there was a bit of an update um, they there was a suggestion the Hawks were going to offer pick 63 for Essendon uh, for this player now that has been subsequently rejected I kind of understand why that it gives absolutely no benefit to Essendon I don't think they're going to be taking a pick this late in the draft is it fair for his value? It probably is. And there's also the rule, right? So he is a second year rookie. He's on the rookie list, not the primary list. The rule is if you get offered a, another rookie deal, you are able to walk to any other club as a delisted free agent. If your host club, AKA the club that you already play for, offers you a senior list spot, you are not a delisted free agent. So if you do two years as a rookie and then get offered another year as a rookie, you actually have the same rights as a delisted free agent to sign with anyone else. So. Essendon really don't have any bargaining power here because they were uh, they've offered D'Ambrosio a one-year rookie deal. So as far as I'm concerned, this can be a uh, this can be a delisted free agent signing for Hawthorne. So maybe this deal doesn't happen after all. Maybe he just signs with them straight up. In other news, as we expected, Shane McAdam uh, formally made his way to the Melbourne Footy Club. He is now officially a demon, and this happened more or less the way I predicted it, in the sense that as soon as the Crows would give up on Harrison Petty, which probably became clear, you know, 24 to 48 hours ago, maybe more than that to be to be honest with you. The Demons offered their future second round pick and that was accepted. So uh, that would be a pick in the early mid thirties, depending on bids next year. Um, and that was probably all that was realistic. Uh, Melbourne actually do hold uh, Sydney's future second as well. So they still got a presence in next year's second round. They give up their own nominal second round pick uh, for McAdam. And this deal finally gets done after um, yeah many weeks of speculation. The other deal that formally happened this uh, today, rather, is that Paddy Dow and Nick Caulfield both found new clubs as part of a four-team deal. So I'll try and break that down for you. First of all, to be clear, Paddy Dow made it to St Kilda. Nick Caulfield made it to the Western Bulldogs. Carlton's obviously involved because they had Paddy Dow, and Essendon got involved for pick swaps as well. So I'll try and break down exactly what everyone got. So Carlton lose Paddy Dow and a future third and fourth, but what they got back was a future third round pick from Essendon, a future fourth round pick to the Bulldogs, and a future fourth round pick uh, tied to Fremantle. So honestly, like it's it's just like a big swap of thirds and fourths between clubs. Uh, nothing really worth analysing there. The Essendon one is more interesting. They got. Pick 35 out of this deal simply by being involved and a future fourth round pick tied to Carlton. What they lost was a third round pick, 52, and a future third round pick. So they've downgraded them third to fourth next year and they've upgraded 52 to 35. That is interesting. That is actually quite a lot of value for Essendon here. I can only think that they've received 35 by virtue of the fact that whichever club gave that up, in fact, it was St. Kilda, they don't intend to take 35. They don't see the draft as being valuable around that range. But just on the surface of it, Essendon get a pretty good upgrade there. Good for you, Essendon. Uh, St. Kilda received Paddy Dow, uh, a second round pick currently 40. Wow, it's crazy to think a second round pick is pick 40. And a future third round pick tied to Carlton. What they lost was Nick Caulfield, a second rounder that was 35, pick 56, and a future fourth round pick. So that's an interesting one. So I'm trying to do the algebra on this. Caulfield becomes Paddy Dow, and they get an... Uh, downgrade from 35 to 40 as well as getting a third rounder in 56 and a future fourth this is confusing Caulfield becomes Dow 35 becomes 40 a future third rounder becomes a third rounder this year and they also get a future fourth round pick so that's a pretty steep price but I suppose at the end of the day Nick Caulfield hasn't actually played a lot of football I don't think he's played since 2021 so that would explain why you know they didn't really get much else outside of the player swap if that makes sense and finally the Western Bulldogs the fourth team in this deal get Nick Caulfield and 52 and 56 this year then they give up 40 and a future fourth round pick so in addition to getting Caulfield for you know not very much at all 
They've also swapped 40 for 52 and 56 this year. Again, we know that they're accumulating points for a bid match for Jordan Croft. So I'd say that uh, Essendon did really well out of this, and I'd say the Bulldogs did pretty well out of it too, considering they've got more points and Nick Hoffield. But anyway, guys, that is all the news uh, as it currently stands. And if I have missed anything, I will cover it because I'm planning to do a deadline day preview video, which should be out for you probably tomorrow morning by the time you're watching this. So that's all I've got for you for right now. But again, stay tuned for more content. Of course, I'm going to be uh, covering deadline day as best as I can, as well as uh, probably some post-trade period analysis as well, because you've got to work out the winners and losers and all that. So stay tuned to the channel for more of that. Um, furthermore, I'm going to start my draft content soon. I filmed a video last night and I've got an idea for a series where I can make plenty of content on the draft and hopefully you'll get value out of it. So for now, thank you very much for the support. Thanks for getting me the 23k and I'll see you in the next video guys. Cheers.